Welcome to Forcepoint Data Security Endpoint and Risk Adaptive Protection Platform. This enterprise solution is a very comprehensive data protection solution for both Mac and Windows endpoints. Uh, and that is fully cloud hosted, making Forcepoint 1 a very fast, easy to use platform. We've built in uh, risk adaptive protection into the same interface as DLP. And what this does is this uh, conjoins comprehensive data movement and contextual information to assess risk for the organization. Here in the home dashboard, we can see the risky users view. And from the risky users view, this shows us the riskiest users in the organization. And we can view this on a monthly, on a weekly, or our hourly risk trend timeline. Now, analysts can also focus not just on the risky users, but also on the alerts. And when they focus on the alerts, they can filter out some of the criticalities, such as low criticalities. This allows admins to help understand how data interactions are taking place in the business and allows them to focus on rules and categories needing their attention the most. Now, you can also look at the detected behavior from a contextual or content view. So, what this means is we've married the contextual and the content-based alerts. This helps also understand how data interactions happen within the business, and they can also understand what rules need our attention. So top rules may need our attention, whether they're contextual or content-based, uh, or specific categories that need our attention or the categories that matter the most. And we can also view the movement of data within the data movement view here for the destinations or specific channels. This is where analysts can quickly assess movement over major egress channels, such as websites, applications, email, removable media, all to help mitigate potential data exposure. Let's take a look at investigations. In investigations, admins can quickly assess risk within the organization within a single visibility pane. This pane for users, alerts, and devices. We're going to take a look at device telemetry. In the device telemetry, this kind of uh, shows us how users understand how USB devices are handled within the organization. We can prevent any potential misuse and understand how files are being transferred, both internal and external, to the organization. This type of device control is unique to Forcepoint Data Security and included within the solution. Let's take a quick look at alerts. This is where we can understand the overall alert summary by evaluating what constitutes a risk. Which activities, uh, which actions took place, which categories, which channels are impacted? As you can see here from the single pane, and a very, a very quickly you can see that in the single pane uh, we've got multiple channels, web, removal media, system events, even all the way down to applications or SaaS applications being covered by CASB API, Data at Rest, or CASB Inline. With many customers that have separate vendor solutions for CASB, SWIG, email, uh, with all different types of DLP capabilities, enforcements, and even incident triage, we can utilize Forcepoint's data security everywhere approach uh, to make it so that admins can control your Forcepoint 1 applications so through CASB, web traffic through SWIG, email DLPs, all from a single interface and one single policy, which I'll illustrate to you in just a moment. So let's take a quick look at risk scoring. This is the you know, tip of the glacier here, tip of the iceberg. With risk scoring, we can understand who a user is and what they do day to day. And this is established. This establishes how they're supposed to be interacting with protected data. By understanding who that user is, their hierarchy, their permissions, uh, we can understand how that data is going to be used. And if there's going to be any risk of, of potential misuse that can, occur, that can occur. With the same risk scores and overall data movement, we can understand how a user performs their daily job. Now, user risk scores are not based on just numeric alerts. Uh, user risk scores are a context of data and device telemetry, not just incident count. Now, what makes this powerful is the single incident timeline. This incident timeline reduces the need to comb through hundreds of logs and various tickets to understand a single use case. Did data exfiltration occur? Do we need to remediate? With data and device telemetry, we can understand which incidents and events constitute a risk. This is, very, this is a very easy summary, and this is how Forcepoint takes DLP to the next level. Now let's look at those policies that make up the, the alerts. The robust 
force point data security everywhere policies enable admins to combine contextual user behavior with device control and data protection policies to improve understanding of incidents and assess risks, all within a single interface, empowering people to work anywhere with data everywhere. Now, unlike other solutions, Forcepoint policies update fast. And you'll see this policy, DLB policy version, and I'll show you that from the endpoint version. So right now we're at 178, but they are very fast. They immediately push to endpoints. Uh, conversely, alerts appear immediately and are pushed to the console. No one hour or one day wait times for policy updates or alerts. We're going to jump into some of the data protection policies. And we'll jump into the social security one here. So within the, the policies themselves, uh, the robust data policies uh, give users access to well over 1,700 classifiers. And these classifiers can be combined to create more detailed identification of specific data for a user organization, or it can simply use the out-of-the-box classifiers versus custom classifiers. But any way that you use it, you can identify over 900 data types, and you can identify those across over 150 regions, 89 countries, for all major compliance mandates such as HIPAA, GLBA, GDPR, and many others. Uh, you can also specify which sources that you want to include or exclude. And we can be fairly specific with any of the organizational units within the, the, within the domains, outside the domains, business units, etc. We can also specify which destinations that the egress channel we want to model, monitor. Uh, anything from the endpoints, such as anything printing, removable media, specific applications or application groups, like uh, groups of browsers or uh, cloud storage, email, portable devices, etc. Uh, including input email, uh, such as Outlook or a cloud email, uh, any type of web channel that we're going to monitor. And with our CASB, we're looking at data at rest, which is our API, um, being able to monitor anything that has external file sharing, uh, anything that's got internal file sharing, and as well as inline, being able to monitor well over 800,000 app SaaS applications within our database, you can choose critical applications that which you wish to monitor for any specific policy. Now, with that, there are several actions that can be taken. Actions that are just matches for a uh, cumulative matches, individual matches, such as any numerical match. And this is where we can be fairly progressive with being able to automatically uh, take users from an auditing approach to everything from an auditing approach to a coaching approach to encryption, uh, as well as all the way up to block all. Now, this is also where we specify risk adaptive protection. And within risk adaptive, the same protections apply. This is where the, you can truly have that ability for that contextual understanding. This is where we combine over 130 indicators of behavior, which helps DLP make more sense and provide more meaningful alerts to accelerate incident triage. Now, we're going to make a small edit to this policy, and we'll see how that shows up on the endpoint. And as I noted, we're at policy version 178. We're going to save that. We're going to push that particular change and deploy that policy. We're going to take a quick look at device control while we while that do that while we do that. And device control is where we can marry that uh, that that device control that uh, unique device control, and we can specify things like a kiosk policy or a student policy, restricting users from using USB uh, or removable media at a kiosk that uh, multiple people use, or a, a student USB policy where it's read-only. You can still access the data to look at it, but not do anything with it or save anything new to that, that removable media. And then again, with the risk adaptive protection, we cover well over 100 and uh, 30 policies, 130 indicators of behavior uh, to give that contextual information for any particular user behavior. Now, we're going to go and look at it from an endpoint perspective, and we're going to focus on a fairly low uh, risk user, Stacy. Stacy here has a very low risk, and we can take a look at what Stacy's going to do today. 
as mentioned previously, uh, the update to the policy was made, and it was 178. We're going to take a look here at the policy on the endpoint itself. And within the policy on the endpoint itself, it's the most recent real-time policy. We actually updated to 179 after we deployed the policy. So very quickly, those policies are being pushed out, so there's no extra hour, 24 hours waiting in order to test policies to make sure they work for a single user or the entire environment. Now, let's take a look at what this user can do today, Stacy. So we're going to look at, she's got specific memos of names, um, names and social security numbers that she's responsible for. So if she wanted to take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these names and maybe create a new file. And maybe she's going to save that file on her flash drive. And, oh, now she's got a warning. She's tried to save some of the data um, on removal drive, but uh, that organization doesn't allow that, and it's been contained. Uh, well, she realized that she made a mistake. That was not something she should have done. Uh, maybe, she'll realize, maybe she'll go ahead and just save it someplace else on the computer or do this job a little bit later. <laughs> As you know, she still has the she still has it in her clipboard, and uh, maybe she's going to go ahead and email a friend. And she totally forgot that she's using she's got something in her clipboard, and she hits paste, and she's going to email a friend. Now she realizes now that oh wait, I was I hit copy paste. I'm trying to email a friend. Uh, maybe this is uh, data that shouldn't be uh, sent out. But now that she's got a coaching warning. The coaching warning says, hey, this is, is this an acceptable operation approved by the, the manager or, you know, is this redacted data, okay? Or is this something that's, that, that's for real business purposes? This allows them, the user to know that they possibly have uh, violated a policy with the protected data and it also times out. So it was blocked because it was timed out. And now she's not going to do that anymore. But she may decide that, hey, you know, while I'm in here, I'm going to go ahead and look for uh, specific positions. I'm going to look for a position as maybe a senior analyst. Maybe I'm going to, I'm going to look for a couple positions here, you know, and, uh, you know, maybe I'm going to apply it something just to see what's out there. And all of this may be innocuous. Uh, but it also may constitute a pattern. So as an analyst might be looking at it, someone's saving data to a USB, someone's doing something uh, that might be uh, considered a, a lever or someone who's about to leave the organization and maybe they're trying to take data with them. These are all things that uh, need to be assessed as far as the context of what's going on in, from the user perspective and the, uh, the content of the data that's being accessed. And Maybe she's got, went ahead and installed a encryption program. Maybe the encryption program was already installed, and now she's thinking about encrypting some of this data, uh, possibly with uh, you know adding it to an archive, adding it to a password archive. And then saving it to Guess we're going to save it. We're going to try and save it to the USB. And now we've saved it to the USB. And since we realized that we just installed this and maybe we didn't need, mean to install it, or maybe the user wants to uh, reduce any evidence of being found out that they've installed applications, uh, they're going to go ahead and clear the application log. And then clear the security log as well. Now, all of that happening just now in real time. Let's see how many alerts that we got. Let's go ahead and refresh the page. And now look, Stacy. Stacy has gone up to a ripe from zero to forty-seven as a possibly risky user. Now, what does this mean? We can take a look at Stacy directly, and these. Now understand that these alerts showed up in a matter of seconds. No waiting for the alerts to, to, to accumulate and go through uh, multiple systems. They showed up fairly immediately. And as she 
with Enforce Point One console, we can see how quickly all of these alerts really did show up, and and we can put this together, which empowers admins to effectively identify the risk and possibly stop the exfiltration. Uh, while other solutions will make you wait hours and to view and access alerts. Uh, now, note that we're looking at a lever, and it's connected to that job application we talked about. Uh, so, pulling out the job site doesn't necessarily denote risk, but in the context along with the other data copy or data movement events, it could be determined that this data is potentially being gathered to go to a competitor, hence the increase from the risk score from a 0 to a 57. I want to thank you for joining us today for this Force.1 data security endpoint and risk adaptive protection platform walkthrough.